you painting something that people were not happy mm. where you were painting, you find your piece not buffed, you find your piece burned down. So you went, you went there and then someone burned your wall. What? Burned your wall, like some, some set a light. What, Just for an oil or petrol on it and... Yeah, I don't even know because I got come back there with the piece unfinished. I wanted to finish the day after, for example, and they couldn't because some other crew got upset with you because you painted in their spot and then you basically get your piece set alight. Wow. <laughs> so you go there, your wall is black, like fucking burned. Killer, killer, podcast. Killer, killer, official dot com. Street Culture TV. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast, live and direct, central London, or as central as you need to be. And it's a pleasure to have you here. Sharing is caring. Get involved. Tell a friend to tell a friend. If you're a newbie, welcome. If you're an oldie, then uh, you know what time it is. Television app, free download iPhone, Android for all the sport and art, street culture and more. Our sponsors, the mighty GK Nifty Heads, have a massive 100,000 play-to-earn NFTs to give away to the streets. Just hit the link in the description or go to gknifteyheads.com and get ready for Hoddle Wars Summer 2024. We go international around these places and nothing gives me great pleasure than to uh, reconversate. I say reconversate because he met me when I did my first ever piece back in, God, those five, six years ago. Pat, nah, it was less than that even. Um, Naples stand up, a pedigree from uh, from Italy and uh, creating waves over here in the UK for a good while now. PS is far in the ah, building. How you doing, man? <laughs> how yeah. are you? Yeah, good, 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 yes. yes. It was such a random uh, moment. Obviously, we'd met before yeah. and uh, you recited when, when it was and everything. It was like to the wire, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a while ago, we met in this spot, and then uh, yeah, I was just painting a piece, and then the guy at the shop said, oh, be careful with that guy, you know, he's painting his first piece, my name, blah, blah, blah. I said, yeah, man, more than welcome. And then uh, I think that's what we met. Mm. But I think I knew already about your beatbox stuff, et cetera, mm. et cetera. But uh, yeah, good days, good old days. It was a good, it's kind Fucking of a good old days. Somehow six years ago or something. I oh, know, that's what I was trying to calculate. As I, was, I was kind of introduced, and I thought to myself... Oh, yeah, well, like, actually, that does kind of pair up right. Maybe like five years ago, right? Probably. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was a time where I actually started painting again because my career has been more like a up and down sort of. I stopped and started so many times. In more the time that I've been stopping <laughs> than the time I've been painting. Why is that? Life. So it's yeah, complicated life. The uh, movement between. Italy to other countries, mm. different life, different lifestyle, I would say, sort of. Right. It, it, right. Let me tell you this, right? If you go to a party on Saturday, you don't go to painting on Sunday, <laughs> first of all. <laughs> right, right. Uh, and what, never, this is in London? This is London or both? No, 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 no. This is, this is before. So I, I start painting in, the, in the, my, my sort of early... Like teenager, mm -hmm. but then obviously when you teenager, of course you you might be in the culture, but also you go all your friends and say, oh let's go here, let's go there, blah blah blah. Yeah. And then what happens is you just probably end up painting or maybe not end up painting. All I'm saying is consistency has never been a part of me. <laughs> well, it depends on what side of the consistency you're playing. <laughs> right? Exactly, man. That was the bad consistency. <laughs> yeah. So, but the thing is, when from COVID, I would say from COVID time. It's been the time where I decided, I realized that consistency equal, you know, evolution. So mm. that's when I started literally finishing pile of paper, just to sketching every day. So every day every I give day. my, yeah, sort of, you know, I just wanted to evolve. And then I have a lot of time finally, even the maturity of the, the, the approach changed. Mm. Mm. Like before it was just a, Teenager things going out there, bombing station trains and tanks all over the place, etc. I came to London. It was the wow effect of London. As so obviously parties, because yeah. I always been in that sort of vibe as well. And uh, so graffiti to me never really always clash with 
party scenes because he was a he was more like a dance sort of scenes where I was into. I used to work in clubs, for mm. example. I've been a, a visual artist in grabbing projections, etc. So I've always been that part that that was also part of my life. When I went to London, obviously the capital of parties, right? <laughs> yeah. So, I can imagine. yeah, let's go here, let's go there, let's yeah. go X or Y or let's go fabric, blah blah blah. So as well the, the, the obviously I love hip hop. So but also that is a part of, of my life. So I can't I don't regret doing whatever I've done. Mm. But I'm really happy that now I found my sort of consistency. You've just hit so many markers on my th kind of theories of the whole thing. Um, we met five years ago and you're right, time flies. It's what you do with that time, isn't it? And somehow, if you, it's like going to the gym in a way because you, before you know it, you've done, you know, three weeks of... Mm every morning training and you don't notice your progression your you know your flexibility and your strength and your agility but it's kind of the same with graph or anything that you apply repetition to isn't it yeah. time flies in a way yeah yeah it's sort of yeah exactly i think yeah it's sort of the same things like the routine so the good routines you get you get into that sort of good routines you don't want to do it because it's hard work right graffiti mm. is hard work mm. because you wake up you need to be on time because otherwise people get you the spot. You don't have even the space to paint. <laughs> you bring in a massive bag of cans and then you just step up and down a ladder <laughs> so all true. day. Yeah. So that is literally a day of work. So if you get over that thing and say, yeah, but that, that's what I love. So I need to do this thing. And then you do it once, you do it twice. And then that's what you do. You just carry on doing it. And then I know it sounds strange, but the graffiti is not... I don't make a living out of it. For me, it's like a, another day of work after the work that I already do. Mm. So it's it's never, you know, I never, I never really relax. I never really. <laughs> so, but well, it creates idle time, doesn't it? And then you end up doing things like partying, going drinking too much and, you know, hanging out with the wrong crowd. And, and that's kind of, it's finding things to do in the time that's important. When you, when you, teen, yeah, that's, that's what I mean. That when you, yeah, my younger age, that was it. Mm. So the fact that obviously I have a crew and the crew were really committed on painting, et cetera, et cetera. But I also have a, another kind of crew and the guys who were in the streets and it's not exactly the same sort of, of crew. So the so graffiti took me out a lot of um, problems that I could have had being in the streets. Really? So he took me out and also put me in the right, the right path. But because you're young, you, you don't know what the right path is. Obviously, mm. you can fall in addictions you can fall in you know crimes and uh, so I, I, I'm from a bit of a you know rough place when I when I was in Italy that's where, where I'm from in Naples so, so let's you, talk you, about that wow so growing up um in Naples it, give me give me some background on that How, what was it like your childhood so you need to imagine that when I started it was the late 90s no Instagram, no social media. No, the only things we had, things that we see around, like we literally pil been pilgrimage mm. to walls and say, oh my God, look at that wall. So I come from the outskirts of Naples. So we got like a couple of Hall of Fames with these old names that used to, used to paint there. Who were the, the names? Who were the names? So we have people like, you, you might know them because they, they, they all turn into artists at the end of the day. They some names like Mo, some names like Lucky, <laughs> uh, Fun. We have these, these legends. For us, it was legends. They, they really, really they never really get the to to the high level of graffiti but for us it was just amazing pieces that and kings, it was also yeah. the only piece yes that was the king of our of our scene and then they all got crew like ktm polo shawan shout out to polo shawan actually oh come on come on international so crew that yeah. was that was literally the top of the top of what we could have seen and that was to see the beginning of seeing trains painted <gasps> because we living in the area called the Vesuvian area. So we have this train called Circum Vesuviana. And then you could start seeing all the train painting, etc. So that gets into that sort of, I want to do that, I want to do that. The Vesuvian, was it called the Trania? 
circumvesuviana, which yeah. means that it surrounds all the Vesuvian area. So okay. you imagine the Vesuvian is a volcano and then there is a train that goes all around it. And then there was obviously a lot of graffiti riders all around the Vesuvian. So it's like a talking. circle line, basically. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah Vesuvian circle line. Wow. So, um, so yeah, so that's that's the the beginning of the career was um, not knowing nothing. So you you didn't even know the people, right? So everyone was unknown. All you could see is this amazing stuff on the wall, and you say, "Shit, I want to do that. I yeah. really want to do that." I was so impressed about all of that, and then I thought there was some links to some music I start to hear which I really love. It was hip hop. And then I started seeing something so cool on the floor. There was break dancing. And I said, this thing is so cool. Are they connected or not? We have no idea. Right. We have no idea. And then all wow. of a sudden I started connecting all the dots. I said, I love hip hop, I think. Yeah. I think that's, that's what it is. It's hip hop. So I love it. I want to do it. And then naturally, obviously I went to the graffiti because I would, I think, you know. Graphic designing a, and all that. Yeah, yeah. I'm a visual person. And then obviously I went to that. I'm not going to lie to you, I break my arm once. I was a kid. I was trying to, to break the hands. I basically like follow my own arms. I smash my fucking hands. Damn. And the, the funniest thing was I <laughs> broke this, this thing here. So the, the only things I broke here, then I had to do massive steel. So the middle here. finger? So basically I was walking like this. With, with your finger in the, <laughs> Yeah. So you, you broke the middle finger and you have it sticking up the whole time? That's absolutely... <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's like some Mr. Bean so weird, comedy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I think I, yeah, I said, okay, I've done that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, but Made yeah, enough enemies. Career right? Yeah, 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 there, yeah, yeah, Right there. And then I just, the jokes aside, I just went into graffiti. But even that was difficult because who does graffiti? So I met my crewmate into the gym. What? So this guy, I used to do Taekwondo. Did you? So Taekwondo, yeah, I've done that for 11 years. Um, don't, so fuck with, don't fuck with fur, man. <laughs> it fucking, it'll have you on the floor. So I met this guy and uh, he was doing Taekwondo with me. We got this protection, right? So we got these chest protections. And um, one day he came down to the gym with this child protect with, with this chest protector and he saw some graffiti on it. I remember it was like a sort of a character with a spray can, a bit of a, you know, in a stand in a pose. And um, I said, Oh my god, I think I found someone who loved graffiti. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. so excited because I didn't know shit. I didn't know nobody. I didn't know nothing about it. All I know is what I saw. Yeah, yeah. So we went to the change room and then I said, Ernesto, it's called this guy. I said, Ernesto, uh, so what's, what is it that you got on your, on your thing? Is that graffiti? And they say, yeah, yeah, what? You are into it. And they say, of course I'm into it. Look, and then I've got my, my, my black book in the back. Because <laughs> I used to, I, my, all, all I wanted to do is a chance to someone to do it. And you so, have got already the Yes, I have already there. I, I, have, no. I have my fucking black book yeah, yeah. In, my, in my gym things. And I... Put it off and then I put it out and then I said, Look, this is what I do. And it was on my tag, and my tag was corn because te corn do. So I so that was my very first tag. And then um and then basically what we did is um obviously we shared this you know passion and then uh, all of a sudden we decided to do our first wall. Because for us it was just sketching because we have no idea, we have no money, yeah, yeah. we have we didn't know how we even start. So one afternoon after school, so... So we, how old are you we, this time, at this point? Uh, it was 98, 1998. So maybe I was, I can't do math. <laughs> maybe I was 15, 14, Mid-teens. something like that. Okay, yeah, cool. yeah, 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 sort of me, me, teenage. So I had a garage with cars in there, uh, all cars, a bridge. <laughs> so I said, Ernesto, I think what we need to do is, first of all, convince my dad to do some shit on the wall because obviously he had no idea what graffiti was. And then for me, it was just, oh, can I just damage your garage? This dad? is like an amazing scene that's out of the cinema of like two right. characters like just <laughs> working so, out a graffiti. I love it. Yeah. So I, my dad, I, I convinced my dad. So <laughs> one afternoon I said, now that move the car because I need to find that wall. I said, yeah, okay. We went in the garage, me and Ernesto, this guy, Mr. Mache, shout out Mache. Big up Mache. And uh, Get it in. we start sketching with a pen. We, we took a pen out of a, out of a pocket and then we, because we didn't know yeah. that you could sketch with. And there was a lot of paint, you know, you had to kind yeah, of work yeah, with we it. Yeah, we only have three 
we only have three sort of can, three, four can. I remember it was a, like a yellow and purple pea. So we, we start sketching in the, on the wall, but it didn't work because obviously it was all like powdery. So you, the pens are not working. So it takes an hour just to sketch that things with a ballpoint pen. <laughs> <Get> some... <laughs> really? We have no idea, man. We literally never seen someone doing graffiti before. So we, we have no idea. Wow. So we did this sketch and then I remember say so it was a K Quan and then it was a spray can that looked like a mug because we came out with <laughs> and then there was this I called Yeko. So it was his first tag. And uh yeah that, that's that's the the rest of the wow. history. Wow. Yeah. That's, See, that's the how early start. beginnings man like um you mentioned there about uh just prior, you mentioned the um, street life and the graffiti street life being two very separate things. For, Na- for Naples, Italy as a whole, they've got a different code of conduct, haven't they, for, for street life? There is, there is, yeah. So sometimes, what, well, path can cross easily. So we, we used to hang around with some guys that come from... We call it Bronx, uh-huh. basically. It was some, as you, in English, you would say council flats, estate, yeah. big, big estate. Yeah. They used to call <laughs> basically Bronx. Wow. So you could go up there and find people that used to break dance next to a barrel with fire in there. And maybe the same guy, it was the same guy that was probably after an hour doing a robbery to the train station right what? there and come back and then live in that street life dealer drug dealer over there and then maybe some hall of fame with just fresh graffiti painted by them as well so that was that was my youth sort of being in that um how to say it? So, so for me that was that was that was my the beginning so it's crazy confusion it's, it is was, that confusion because like you know you got the cr- hard hardened criminality and then they'll just be doing some head spins or that was that was the coolest that was almost the coolness of it because <laughs> it, it felt like i was ritually in the bronx in the 70s it's the same thing yeah, same you need to imagine these terrible oh, terrible that. estates and then with people they're just hanging around and then really dark spots and then there were people painting there and then it was tough man it was it was it was a rough Rough area, and then we knew that. But well, so th- we never really involved too much into bad stuff. What mm. we wanted to do is l- design letters and then create style and create, you know, surprise for people that wake up the day after and say, Whoa, Whoa. what is that? And yeah. then all the people come down and say, Oh, you know, Sphere spending this, you know, the guy's spending this, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I'm not going to lie, sometimes we. We, we, you, yeah, we, we, we were in this sort of environment. And then the same thing, the same time, so you painting something that people were not happy mm. where you were painting. You find your piece not buffed, you find your piece burned down. So you went, you went there and then someone burned your wall. What? Burned your wall, like some, some satellite. Well, for an oil or a petrol on it and... Yeah, I don't even know because I got come back there with a the piece unfinished. I wanted to finish the day after, for example, and they couldn't because some other crew got upset with you because you painted in their spot and then you basically get your piece set alight. Wow. <laughs> so you go there, your wall is black, like fucking burned. And then... That, that is the Bronx. That is the Bronx right there. That's yeah. New York in the early 80s. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you the crazy stories like that, man, that actually... Yeah, it was it was it was tough. This is the same guys that now we're friends and maybe some of them are in my crew. But when you crazy kids from that sort of part of the, the world and then you you just see you just behave have like everyone else behave around you and then if it's rough then you behave rough and then you need to start behaving like them. But that's it. But I'm, that taekwondo came in handy. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah man, nah. <laughs> <laughs> that tag no, nah, that tag actually that's that's almost the opposite. You you sort of learn a lot of how to behave because you taekwondo is about rules and so realistically what you do is just try to never never really get into a fight because there is a sort of respect to the opponent and so you, it sort of gives that self um, control instead of being aggressive. Mm-hmm. So we we never been I, I'm telling you all this crazy story, but scary story if you like, but We've been the we always been the guys that only care about doing good graffiti 
we couldn't, but we yeah. tried yeah, yeah. at the beginning. Obviously, you know, the, you were the, the young age, and uh, the, but we, we, we were all fully, fully, fully into fully it. in. Yeah. You think it's it's interesting the dynamic of like the martial art there being one of discipline, restraint, um, method, and practice, and chill. But then the other side of your life in the streets is really the complete opposite. It was. Um, at the beginning, so the, at the beginning, yes. So the beginning was a sort of like discipline and then crazy stuff because the, my, my, the beginning of my career was completely legal walls. Mm -hmm. So we start painting in the street, like everyone else starts tagging in the street or doing crazy spot, like on top of the bridge. How did that guy get there? Mm -hmm. Oh, we need to go higher, obviously. And then track sides and then obviously trains. Mm -hmm. I remember we, we, on that, we, we used to live, at, as I told you, we used to hang around this, this neighborhood uh, where it was the train station next to it. So we basically hang around on the station and we're just waiting for the train to come into the into the station and stop but we used to, to jump on the track and then tack the trains oh, and back then jumps on, all day boom 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 back jumps was uh, a big thing that we, we used to we used to do quite a lot there was so much adrenaline in that that was amazing so we started with that thing so that was the our crazy sort of beginning of you know uh, introduction to graffiti but to get back to your point the discipline, it's something that now has saved my graffiti career, if you want to call it, because, um, yeah, it makes you like a samurai, like you want to, you, your discipline, every single week you go paint, no way out. So you want to do it, Friday, sketching, Saturday, paint, sorting out, Sunday, graffiti, and that's and that's another week after that, and then after that. So that's that's the, that's why I was talking about the consistency I was talking before. Maybe that comes uh, from that sort of discipline. Yeah, th without question, it does. That's such an interesting angle, and again, it it fills the well of of energy that can only be uh, one of similar when you're practicing a martial art or practicing a um, a spirituality when mm. you're practicing um learning a craft whether whether it's work experience or apprenticeships it's like it's really important that you get you zone in and make the method repeat and so it feels like the norm mm. yeah it's like yeah it's it's interesting the way i i'm really really grateful or the fact that I don't know what sort of gods that tell me that I have to to be more disciplined. I think what it is apart from that, I think it's the even the maturity. Uh, something I said before, it's about the the approach that you that you have to to graffiti and take things a little bit more more seriously. I think it it comes with the net with, with the age. I think. And um, because there are there, I, I never I never been the guy that so all my crew. He's not making a living out of graffiti, me included. We don't, everyone does the weirdest job, I tell you right now. <laughs> so one, one of the guy, he drives a ferry boat somewhere in Italy. <laughs> another guy. Amazing. I swear to God, another guy is a dentist. Uh, he's a top level dentist. He does speeches and he's in the, <laughs> he's, in, he's in speeches, etc. cetera. Um, uh, Congress meetings and that. Um, I am probably the, the closest one to uh, one is works in Louis Vuitton or something like that. I am the closest one to graffiti because I'm I work with visual. Um, but yeah, there's steps. So we never we never really get totally totally um take to taking our life. So we kept that as passion. So that that in a way is good because you never really make a life uh, out of graffiti so it keeps as a passion but the other side you might be taken out from your graffiti life just because you got other things to do mm. so this is why the consistency and the maturity of graffiti uh, came out with that, with that sort of discipline afterwards because I thought I sit down and said what do you want to do you want to actually follow what you what you want to do or just want to carry on and just be inactive or inconsistent mm. so i think the discipline it, it really works for me because uh, it's like giving me take me out so get me out of a lot of like 
stupid things that because you go to a party or maybe you do a night out and then the day after you just don't do the things that you like the most mm. right so i said no i decided to do that thing so one day i wake up i remember so and then i thought i'm gonna do this this weekend and next weekend and next weekend and next weekend if you see my i don't know social whatever so or you you would see that um that kind of consistency. So I post, for example, I think every week. That means that every week I've been painting, and I'm probably this one of the things I'm more proud because yeah, to uh, say that, and you can see the the the, the um, evolution evolution of it. Yeah, um, it's it, it can be quite demanding for people to uh, kind of level up and find that discipline isn't it um it's it's the small incremental things you do it's not actually the, the i mean the reward of seeing you know a an, an archive of weekly pieces is amazing mm. um and it's a kickback it's a reward but it's actually the di little things you do isn't it to create that discipline yeah i think yeah i think yeah it's it's about it's what well, it's i think it's about how much you you got it so how much so if you really love it, then you, you do it. I don't think there is too much... Uh, um, it's, it's not difficult, really. It's not difficult. It's, it's about you. So you want to do it, and then you, you actually go out there and do it. I, but I see... Yeah, you're right. I think it's nice to see that sort of evolution. Uh, I hate my old pieces, for example. Everything I do, and then it's old for me. It's two weeks old. It's already old. Really? So I, it's, yeah, because I think... So for me, it's always been important the um, of the, the, the evolution of of something. So I'm really, really keen on making the letters towards the perfection. And for me, obviously, I'm not an artist, so all I can do is just to do my best to mm. to shape them. Every time I draw, every time I sketch, try new shapes. I'm not gonna lie. It's last year, for example, it's been a bit of a like a moment of of a uh, crisis. For, for style because I couldn't find any other way out. I couldn't find any um, evolution for something I was doing. So in my mind, I was doing every time similar things. But I think it, because you, I was in a bit of state with, with my mind and uh, mm -hmm. there was big changes in, in my life that I think it take me out for, for that, you know, sort of um, um, inspiration uh, yeah. path. But... I'm happy to say that. Yeah. I'm back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's so, beautiful. Yeah. And, and that shit happens a lot, you know. Was it, is it um, Tyson said, you know, um, uh, a winning boxer is a happy boxer, and it's the kind of same thing with, it's kind of the same thing with, <laughs> you're doing that a lot today. I don't know why. It's yeah, it's so big, man. It's in my face uh, all the time. <laughs> we, keep it, we, keep it, we keep it big and splashy on a podcast. Yeah, um, yeah but it's, it's that it's that sweet spot where you're at your happiest and carefree and you're able to just do what 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 you feel responsive to that affects your you know your well-being in your life isn't it it's true i i remember once um it was years ago but like decades ago so i painted this thing it was completely black and then almost i cut outline this outline was really strong um, a friend of mine came across and then um, he, he was behind me. It was like a graffiti jam. And then he said, tell me, the, tell me about your life. What are you doing? I think, I think you're struggling with your life right now, isn't it? And then I said, yeah, I, I, was, I was going through like a bit of a moment in my life. And then I was a bit obviously dark and sad probably in my mind. And then he said, yeah, Jesus, I, I am. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not very good. How do you know? And then I said, because you're painting that. It was like a sort of gothic letters, a bit like L.A. All I'm saying is, it's true, the fact that the more I am relaxed, the more I conduct a linear life, the more I sit down and then I do the things I love and uh, it goes well. Mm -hmm. So the more you, obviously, you I might say something obvious, but it's, it's really true. So if you, if you go through a, a moment of your life and then, Probably you focus on other things yeah. and then that will mirror your graffiti um, attitude. It will mirror your graffiti outcome as yeah. well. Because you go over there and paint something completely dark, for example, or I don't know, something quickly because you want to go home or maybe paint always the same thing because you don't want to 
you know that it's right for you, so you go painting, but you haven't prepared nothing. So you go there and paint the same shit that you done like last week or spray cans, leftover yeah. stuff, and uh, you don't really put all yourself in there. But that's that's also life, isn't it? No, no one has got like a linear path. Mm. And it's also gra graph as well in a way. There's something really... Uh, New Yorky about you know a dusty throb that doesn't have much um, care and due attention to the 3D or the outline or you know it doesn't hold much value other than its presence <laughs> kind of mirrors maybe some of the people's moods when they're doing it <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah it's different I think bombing is always like the battle between stylers and bombing I think a good st once I remember one one guy, one graffiti writer. I'm not gonna name it, but it's top level. He said, "You see a good writer through his throw ups. That's where all your styles come out because <laughs> it's but it's just a simple line. But <coughs> the essence can be just in a simple line with some coloring. It doesn't man doesn't." Doesn't mean that whatever you do, like use twenty colors or twenty cans, that's better than than that thing. So no. You can just leave a tag, and that tag has got million styles in in one, or maybe that that tag can be declined in ten styles. So that guy's got ten styles just tagging. So that's also something to consider. I never, I'm uh, yes, I do styles now. Um, but I really understand the, the importance of being able to do everything. So I I think, yes, it is just a line, dusty line, et cetera, et cetera. But if you go style, my friend, that will come that will come out, even if you just attack. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It starts out from inception. Block letters as well. You know, there's something, again, like you're saying about the lines and making sure they're correct and making sure it's right, you know. It's... Yeah, it's about yeah, it's uh, as I said, it's it's about the the attitude of of things. We, me, me and my crew, I was always obsessed about the sort of perfection of everything. There was people that just go that out there and pay much respect to to what people. They're just bombarding every day, every day, not caring too much. But this is probably one of the reason why I do more legal wars now, especially when I'm now in the UK, mm. now it's 10 years, now I don't do many things legal, or maybe, no comment, <laughs> but I do more walls because my attitude is more like dedicated to the perfection, or at least I, obviously I try, yeah, <laughs> it's not, yeah. nothing's perfect, uh, but this is this is what my attitude is, uh, but then there is people that care more like quantity, for yeah, example, yeah, yeah. and then it's, you know, it's the other part of the game, just bombarding, I put your name out there, and then just, just be up all the time, et cetera, et cetera, which is something, you know, also amazing. And then, the, the, you know, the adrenaline of it is is just something in priceless. Yeah. But, and again, know. do it your way, you know what I mean? Like, big up all the bombers, big up all the, you know, the artists, 100%, you know? man, 100%. I, if, you see my, if you see just my walls, so your approach, you understand that comes from that bombing approach because I don't paint straight away on the ladder. I paint so... Okay, I'm short, obviously, but on my upper, it's always like on the level. So mm -hmm. it's like you you doing you throwing a a, a bombing out there like a throw up. So that's the same that that you know when you when you put it on the wall, it's not like I so my, my, I I take a ladder and then I create something on the top and on the right. My approach is always quick, mm -hmm. but then obviously now because I do style of what white sort of white style or whatever style is called i don't even know why mm -hmm. what it is but it's 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 got that sort of approach where you you start in front of you quick lines etc so um it's all good bombing styling man graffiti is just amazing it's amazing <laughs> isn't it and um, do you still sketch I do, I do. I'd love to do more. So uh, that's that's a very, that's a very pain, painful question for me because I I always been living in this this mental drama where I know that I need to do more. I know I need to draw to 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 sketch more, but I always end up being distracted through lines here and there, and then just go there with the sketch, which is still a decent sketch. It's got all these letters, all these loops, etc. I don't like to improvise too much. I like to 
because I care a lot about the evolution of what I do. So I do follow a sketch. You find me out there painting a sketch. Uh, sorry, painting, painting, a, painting a wall. Mm -hmm. But I always start in my sketch. It's very rare that I go there freestyle just because if, for me, even that little loop that I've done it is something new. So it got to be wherever I was planning to have it. Oh, it's got to be right, especially when you're adding something new in. Yeah, it's like... I it's, feel you. Whoa. You want to... There, I know, so, so obviously, you know, people might think, oh, I can do freestyle because obviously I draw too much. I draw a lot and uh, i almost jealous because mm. I, I would mm. love to, for example, draw much more than I do because I don't actually sketch that much and I would love to do it. And you're keen, yeah, yeah. I... Yes, yeah, it's crazy, man. Like I remember last year. This is so embarrassing, but I'll tell you anyway. <laughs> I last year I here went, we go. <laughs> last year, I've been invited to this project, which is sponsored by Irolac and um, from uh, from some guys that do call this uh, project called Your Favorite Artist, Favorite Artist from the page called Sprayzem. Shout nice. out Sprayzem. Nice. I'll so try. So they sent me some Irolac. Uh, Marcus, like a massive pack or Alan Lark t shirt and all of that. Whoa. I use them not too much. The Marcus, I have to say, I'm I, that's what I'm saying. I was embarrassed. Obviously, I did use them, but because I don't draw too much, uh, then uh, I felt like, oh my god, this guy is so nice, so kind. And then I still have got these things brand new in <laughs> the yeah, little, little not, cupboard. Yeah. So, obviously, I did use them. So uh, but um, that tells you how much I would love to to sketch a bit more. But I sometimes just I just don't have the time. the time. That's that's the thing, right? But, but the job I do is proper draining because it's yeah. about all about thinking, solving problems, and then what you do after that. You just want to relax it on the sofa, maybe give a call to your mates in Italy and yeah. that, or you know. So just relax. So I, recently, I bought my new. Turntable, so that's one of my, other, my passion. Ah, um, but I'm a big fan of scratching, of the scratching scene. So I always wanted to do this thing, and um, I finally did. So when I finished my work, I got my little routine. It's not graffiti routine; it's actually a turntable scratching routine. Wow, yeah. that's so sick! Yeah. I love that, you, dude. This is exactly what it's about. It's it's about Try not to splash this. Thing. No, no, you're cool. It, it's it's participation <laughs> in the smallest or biggest of forms. Like you go big in in the hall of fames with pieces, but that's probably just as important as being in your bedroom learning a particular scratch. It's the whole method of it, isn't it? It is. I think you you make a you touch a, the main point, or many people don't understand out there, or maybe young generation. Actually, I don't even want to say young generation because it got be old generation as well. The approach, mm -hmm. so the bedroom, yeah. So that's where you learn the your freaking bedroom is where. All your style is, all your knowledge is, you know, it's it piles up every day. And then yeah. when you when you see guys that don't sketch or don't strive for, for their style, you just find them to the pub and then having a pint and then loads of drop, whatever they do. And then they, yeah. they're trying to sketch because they're going to paint. And then I thought, is this your best moment to sketch? Maybe it is. But I think the, the 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 essence of it is the bedroom. Even in the you can see this. It's thing. true, man. When you, you when you see even the, I see these things that we, we were shy, man. We were we were really shy. We we tend to hide our graffiti well because we know they were not very good, because there was not enough bedroom time to sketch and mm. sketch and sketch. We, we knew that were, we were not ready yet to, to make the big appearance in the wall. So this thing has changed. I, this thing is, is, is changed because I can see a lot of youngsters hitting spots like Stockwell, where you go to Stockwell and then you can see these amazing 
feast like like people like chips. Shout out chips. Mm-hmm. Yeah, big up chips. Yeah. Yes. All the South Lot. Yeah, man. Fucking and right. then you go there, and then you see also you know some newbie coming in the game. Always more than welcome to the graffiti scene, uh-huh. of course. Uh-huh. Welcome on board. Good luck. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> but the thing is, oh, t- solo one as well, of course. Yeah. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Keeping the spot right there. Yeah, keeping it nice. And um, yeah, and then I, I'm surprised because I I was like, shit, I, I'm embarrassed, like, man. I, I, I'm never gonna paint that. I'm gonna see. When I was a kid, we we literally go there and just stay there and then look at this piece, take a picture, go home. Maybe Never take... once considering you're just going to blast a piece when you're not ready. Man, there was no way. There was no way even to talk to them. And to me, I look at these people, they were giants. You know what I mean? They can't <laughs> yeah. even... I, they, if, even if I speak, they couldn't even hear me because they were so big comparing to me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Nowadays, you send a fucking direct message... And then you're in touch with the biggest king in the scene. You know, I, I guess then it, it is different. So the approach, it was, it was completely different. And um, I think, I don't know if what I prefer, because now all, everything is more sort of accessible, isn't yeah. it? So you go the guy right there, you can ask him a question, you can say... Uh, oh, I love your style. Oh, you know, and then you can you can see the guy that you would never ever seen it before, right? Because he's in Australia, so people for I don't know TMD crew yeah, ask yeah. you, I don't know best of like yeah, yeah, big yeah, yeah, kings, yeah. and you would how would you see them no. into early two thousands? It's impossible. So, see, it's about going back to that going back to that bedroom thinking. It's about knowing where your level be be aware of where you are and then you know just be humble and then follow your path slightly step by step not trying to to do too much we always been keeping our heads down we were nobody we, we probably still nobodies but all i all i know is we done the right thing of just keeping our heads down and then just trying to evolve as much as possible how our our letters really because this is what important to me not even the spot or anything I, mm. if you see my if you see my pieces they, many times I paint in Stockwell because I don't really care about where I, where it is because tomorrow, maybe tomorrow is gone and then <laughs> if you paint somewhere else it's um, to me it's the same thing I don't care there are writers that really care about that location that the shot that they take yeah. the picture because they want to they want that, that shot in that particular spot etc etc but to me, to me, what what comes is more like the letters or the styles that you bring to the wall, and then I want people to see that more than anything else. So. Now you come to mention it, there is a sort of clientele that goes to Stockwell, isn't there? Mm. There's a certain kind of writer. There are, I think. So for me, Stockwell was even before, even when I was already in London. I said, "Oh my God, I'm." I don't want to go to Stockholm. There's so much good stuff. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if I want to drop a piece there and then feeling ashamed. Yeah, even before doing it blew it. up, even before they re, re, rebuilt it, it was like that. I went I went to... So my first piece in Stockholm was literally just on the old spot before they redone mm-hmm. it. And then um, there you go. Another long moment of not painting. I didn't paint all probably 19, 19 2019. I didn't paint because I was trying to get married and... I saved some money and I was busy doing other stuff. So, And then uh, the next time I painted Stockwell, it was already with a new uh, pit. And then for me, it was like the mecca of graffiti because mm-hmm. it was all my favorite stuff over there. And then, uh, but at the time I was still living in Brick Lane, so, so or, or around Brick Lane. So for me, my, my wall was, the wall that bring me back seriously into graffiti was the, the Allen Gardens wall. Yeah. The one, because I used to live in Cheshire Street. Yeah. So for me, it was just so easy to get there. And this is the same thing that made me <laughs> get in trouble with graffiti in London. Because uh, I would be able to have time with law and stuff. So they... Really? Yeah. yeah what yeah. happened? So what happened is I, I was painting I was painting a wall but it was sort of night and I was all like black like hoodies and there was some crackheads and it didn't look great so <laughs> when I was painting it was basically behind the nomadic gardens at that moment so okay. I was completely fully aware that the spot was legal but 
you know, in the dark, everything looked dark, dodgy. Yeah, dig, right? dodgy, yeah. So there was these two vigilantes, whatever they called. So they came around and uh, they said, the usual stupid questions, oh, you got paid for it, mate, blah, 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 you know? Yeah. And then I said, no, I don't get paid, man. This is just what I like to do, blah, blah, blah. No, don't worry, don't worry. We're not here for you. We're not here for you. And then uh, they left. So, and I kept, kept painting. They kept, it looks really dark and it looks that sort of environment that you're going to, you know, it, it, just yeah. look, it just looked dodgy. But they came back and then I said, oh, I assume you got permission for it. And then I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, I didn't have any permission for it, but I just know they were sort of legal slash tolerated. I yeah, didn't yeah, know. yeah, that's right, yeah. So I went, yeah, yeah, someone has got it. And then, oh, so you don't have your permission. I said, yeah, yeah, but don't worry, that's that's just legal. And then, um, yeah, you can ask someone. I don't know, man, just let me paint. Basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leave me um, alone, man. Yeah. So um, they, there were some workers in the um, in the spot because they were, there was basically just a delete completely, cancel the nomadic garden. They were just making some, like, fucking flats there mm. like for young professional probably mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i said mate i don't <laughs> i don't know my friend just ask them the workers in there just please let me finish this yeah, yeah. so uh, that was just literally um after work pain relaxing and uh so what happened is i had something a little bit sharp <laughs> with me and uh to open the paint so i bring something that is not very legal to bring and they spot it, and then they say, oh, you got this on you. Oh, don't move, darn, you call the police, blah, blah, blah. So I got arrested, and uh, so, yeah, I've got down the path of, you know, be, be engaging with law and lawyers because I have a, a, this object with me I could, shouldn't have with me. Wow. And, you know, there was a deal, this big awareness, obviously, which is right, about, you know, bringing and carrying them weapons yeah. with you etc but to me that was just a tool to open a paint because i yeah. don't i don't walk around with weapons yeah but obviously they didn't see the fact that that was to me a tool to open a tin of paint yeah. and then painting but obviously not having a television not being aware of all this knife crime all of that so i i didn't know and i feel i feel ignorant mm. to mm. to to be living that situation. Wow. So, so I have a flashback about fucking see my mom yeah. <laughs> and then what's going to happen with my job, et cetera, et cetera. So. That's brutal, man. That is brutal. Unfortunate. Yeah, it is unfortunate. How long did that last for? That must have a been... year. Uh, it lasted a year. So, so they bring me to this, obviously, cells. And so I had to spend some time with <laughs> Stop lots of freedom. Really? And then uh, basically came out and then I have to bring this lawyer in to, to sort out things because I thought this is bullshit. So yeah. it must be someone who's got permission for it. So I've asked people around in the scene, so people that have been in their spot already. Yeah. And then um, I found out that some some of the guys knew someone else that could get me the permission because I wanted to prove that that, that spot was, was actually legal. Wow, that's a, that's a real hard... That was a challenge, right? So, yeah, it was, a, it was an economic challenge. It was a, also a like, personal challenge because for me, imagine still being a foreign, never really dealt with... The British any, law, yeah. Yeah, like low criminal stuff yeah. around here and uh, I'm not part of it. Yeah. And then all I wanted to do is once again, paint. Yeah. So I have to put a lawyer in. So this lawyer have to write a letter and that we have to find permission. Thank God we found the permission through a guy called Jim Bishan, obviously a super famous graffiti artist. Shout out yeah. Jim Bishan, wicked man. Thank yeah, you. Hold tight, Jim. Wow. <laughs> so he got me the permission and uh, so we, we were able to prove that that was a legal spot. But obviously I got down because the knife and that. So... So I still have to, to deal with some stuff. Well, like you're not allowed to carry a knife and fork around in your, <laughs> in your packed lunch or something, is it? No, apparently not. Apparently not. Right, so okay. you, uh, basically, there there was these things, obviously, I, I, I obviously, I, it's it's wrong. So you can't walk around with a knife on you. No, no, and, of uh, But I was, I wasn't, I wasn't sort of, you know, meaning to, no. to, to carry that. It was just, a, because I was yeah. so comfortable that, 
my flat was there and the wall was there. And then I, I felt like I was going downstairs, basically, yeah. not walking around London. So, but they didn't know, right? So I felt, I, I relaxed too much. Yeah. So I relaxed too much. I was so relaxed because he was just literally downstairs. It can happen, man. It happens easy. And, and moreover, you aren't, you know, because you're not got TV, because you're not savvy with the law and you're probably, you're not watching the news. It's like those kind of, those key moments in social London you miss. Uh, I do it all the time, bro. Like uh, I don't watch any news. I felt so stupid. That's the that's the thing. I felt I felt really stupid because I thought, as soon as you know when you see, you don't know nothing, but then you as you see something and then you see it everywhere. So you see that knife crime awareness yeah. everywhere. But I wasn't aware because you were the, just going up and down your ha from your house to the to the wall to the to work and that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, <laughs> when you come out Crazy. from. Cheshire Street, there is that bridge. Yeah. There, look up, look over the, the, the train station. Yeah. So what you do is do the bridge, get down to that little shitty spot with all the graffiti, mm. etc. There were some hoardings in wall, like a sort of wooden wall sort of thing. Mm. And uh, because because I think there was a meeting of style the uh, London organized years ago, so we someone kept holding up this permission to paint over there. So but no one had this permission, they were just tolerated. So I felt I felt was the I felt I was no literally yeah. I was going to my garage and twenty years ago and then painting the a piece because it was so <laughs> it was so for me I was so familiar with the place and I didn't walk around London yeah. with with something on me I literally went downstairs with something on me. Do you but know what I mean? It's so interesting to 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 hear that story within a case that that arguably a lot of graph writers just take it as a given that if a place is tolerated, then you're not going to have any problems in one strand or another. I, yeah, I've, I've, I'm not going to lie. I remember when I got caught, uh, then uh, that was almost Christmas time. Yeah. And uh, so obviously I was ready to go to Christmas, to, to in Italy, mm. spend the time with my families and that. Obviously I didn't say nothing because I didn't want to worry them. But I do remember when I came back, because I came back for New Year's Eve, there was these people blocking someone else in the same spot, paying in the same spot. I think there was some sort of land sheriff people that was just patrolling yeah. that area. But literally someone just painting on some wooden wall. And then they would, I think because they spot me and then they try to, do they make a mission about yeah, what they yeah, call yeah, this? Yeah. this? You, were, you were an example, but there was more that was happening. That was literally... Completely job worth, man. Don't yeah. literally, I have no idea why, but they. I think it, as I said, just all the scenes look dodgy, and then that thing on the on the on the floor, it just made me look bad in their eyes. So mm. they they called the police, and then the rest is history, man. I just yeah. Thank God now it's all gone. I mean, thank God that's gone. That's horrible, isn't it? Yeah, it it's actually it's 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 something that you don't expect, and then it's no. it's not even doing something illegal. It's something that, so you you if you know that you're doing something illegal, so like you eat in a train and then you get caught, but you knew already. Yeah. The surprise of me was going downstairs to paint a relaxing after work little wall, and then you get caught doing something that you think is ille is legal. That's when you go nuts and they say, "What the hell is happening to me? Yeah. Why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that you would just drive me mad, man." That would drive me mad. Anyway, man, yeah. forget yes, that. Yes, let the past be the past, yeah, bro. Yeah. What's the future? <laughs> What's the future, Spur? <laughs> Talk to me about the future. I think future future plans, uh, I think I can't probably, re I've got a few things lined up, things that give me a little bit of, a, you know, happiness and mm. surprise. There are, there are a couple of, uh, project that are coming up with some famous brand. I can't really say nothing, but yeah. there will be there might be a few things in the pipeline that Fantastic. come out. And um, but and um, this what what I want to do is just carry on the way that I'm doing at the moment. Just keep it consistency, and what I'm doing. Just try to evolve my style, and then to be honest, I don't have a lot of uh, uh, how do you say uh, plans. So to me, this is already a big. Uh, achievement, the fact that after 20 years of painting, I'm still out there and painting. I can see, yeah. I can see people, you know, stopping. I can see people stopping because of life. So they made them stop or life changing. Yeah. Um, so I'm still out there. To me, this is already a big achievement yeah, because bro. as I said, I, 
yeah, well, I've, I've, tr I've tried my best to, to do as much as I can. I don't have kids at the moment. And um, so I'm just banging hamburger all pieces like one by one. I'm so, I'm so glad you just said pieces there. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just banging and hammering. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. So that's just my bad language. Right? It's not, I, it's not, I just, uh, <laughs> I try to speak my Metaphorically pen. speaking, of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just said mm. I don't have any kids, but also banging. That, yeah, 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 I yeah. understand that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be careful. Um, but yes, no, I... As I said, for me, for me, just great to to be still out there and mm. then just try to do as much as I can. Life goes on, and then I yeah. Well, you know this this is the time, right? Because yeah. you you don't know what's gonna happen next year. You don't know what's gonna happen next two years. It's truth. So all I can do is it's like seriously, all I can do is just keep in consistency every week. Try to paint every week. I I work nine to five. And then all I've got is Saturday and Sunday. Saturday, I live on my own as well. So Saturday is dealing with everything happening in your flat, in your building, in your life. Mm -hmm. And then find the spot to to paint on Sunday. That's, and let that's your mind go, you know what I mean? So. My brother, it's been a pleasure chatting with you. I've been a fan since we first met all that time ah, ago. Likewise, brother. My brother likewise. Thank you so much. Thank Spur you. in the thank building. <laughs> Hey, see, there you go. More intel, more information, more uh, surprises, fun thrills and uh, activities in the world of Graph Writer. It's fur in the building. Listen, Killer Keller Podcast, Aloe owns out of fashion, all right? Sharing his caring, tell a friend to tell another one to tell a friend. Um, crime don't pay, but neither do they. You stay lucky, people. Don't talk to anyone and I wouldn't. Peace! That was sick. What a story.